to do here is learn how to weld. Hi, I'm Hunter Herman, sculptor and welding instructor, here to show you some techniques and procedures to sculpt in metal. In my teaching clinics and videos, we will explore three main welding processes. Stick welding, SMAW, SAMAW, MIG welding, GMAW, GAMAW, and TIG welding, GTAW, GATA. We will be using these three processes on mild steel, aluminum, stainless steel, and bronze. We'll also use oxy fuel for heating in a forge situation and use plasma cutting. We'll explore some finishing techniques using pneumatic and electric hand tools as well as plating and painting. As part of proper procedures, we will discuss safety precautions. That's one of the things I want to stress here is safety, your safety. And weld to industrial grade standards to ensure proper and secure joints and welds that are aesthetically pleasing. One of the things that I enjoy about metal sculpting is that it is an additive process as well as a subtractive process. This can eliminate a certain amount of inhibitions, such as taking away too much as with working in other mediums, such as stone or marble. One can never really mess up per se, and corrective measures can always be welded in or cut out with a torch or ground away. There is also great strength in the materials and a multitude of functions can be performed on it such as forging cutting, grinding, polishing, bending, and of course welding. In my clinics and tech shops, I stress a hands-on approach. There are a few simple things to keep in mind when welding, and if one pays attention, the eye-hand coordination comes very easily, and soon the student is able to perform quality weld. That's nearly, that's a near perfect weld. With a good foundation in welding, sculpting is quick and direct, resulting in satisfaction and growth. One of the philosophies of my approach to sculpting is that, although most of my work is abstract, the underlying foundation stems from human anatomy. I work from drawings on all my sculpture. Henry Moore once said, if I can see someone's drawings and he knows how to draw, then I will know he is able to sculpt. This idea states that an understanding of three dimensions and structure is important. When rendering a figure, I usually draw, sketch a skeletal system, then layer on the muscles, paying attention to insertion and attachment points. Then if the drawing is to be taken further, I then render the outer layer. The same basic approach applies to metal sculpting. Attention must be paid to structure, whether in the form of an armature with added sheet layers, or with the form and structure of the material directly, as with solid or hollow elements. When I work abstractly, I am always conscious of balance, visually as well as mechanically, of a particular piece. I tend to create my sculpture to have a settled foundation with points of interest to move from or toward, a type of paradox of expanding and contracting, tension and release, stability and movement. I use symbols in my work as a language of similes, metaphors and allegories to bridge the unseen realm with the seen the un or subconscious to the conscious, spiritual to the material realm, or something out of time to our sequential time. Getting back to the drawing for a minute, I have found that my work involves three aspects that are interrelated. Drawing or painting is a two-dimensional process that implies the third dimension, perspective. The second aspect of sculpting is the three-dimensional process, which implies the fourth dimension, time. Though I do not work with mobiles, I do stress and imply movement as one walks to, from, over, or under a piece of sculpture, vantage point and shape are constantly changing. The third aspect to my work involves music. I am also a drummer, and when I drum or react to music, I see shapes and textures, which implies things of the second and third dimensional realm. Another perspective of my approach to art are these implications. I tend not to overstate ideas, 
but indicate them in order to have the viewer participate in the experience. One of these implications is that life energy exists in and beyond the surface of things and people. For the most part, I deal with cognizance, that is, perception. If one looks at a desktop just superficially, it would appear solid. But in our historical time, we can view solids with x-rays and look on the atomic or subatomic levels and find that there is more space than matter and a great deal of movement of these particles at or around the speed of light. Anatomically, even we can be viewed electronically, magnetically, atomically, psychologically, and spiritually. These hidden realms are some of the aspects I wish to reveal through my art. You have an idea? Now you have the tools and means the next time.